What is good, YouTube Quinway Basketball Analysis? Coming to y'all with a quick video. We're going to talk about the Denver Nuggets. I had Nikola Jokic as the MVP of the season, but Jamal Murray tore his ACL yesterday, which is damaging to their chances of coming out the West. You look at Anthony Davis going down. They're just as good as everybody if healthy, especially after the Aaron Gordon acquisition. And then Jamal Murray goes down before the playoffs starts and he's going to be out for the season and the rest of the playoffs. Nobody seen it coming. Nobody wanted to see it. And he's just such a big part of this team being able to play well with Jokic because of his space and ability, his floater ability, his unconsciousness when it comes to shooting and being a great free throw shooter and a decent playmaker. And the fact that they're not going to be able to replace him. They have Capazzo. They have Monte Morris, but those guys are nowhere near as good as Jamal Murray. That's why he's a starter. That's why he got paid the money. And you look at the fact of what he did in the bubble, helping them come back and beat the Jazz by having dominant, excellent performances, while also being a big difference of why they was able to get past the Clippers um, to get to the Western Conference Finals, which nobody really seen him doing last year. But he felt that they can contend. He felt like they was good and he basically backed it up for a little bit in the playoffs. Um, even though this season he got off to a rocky start, he started to figure it out at the right time. And the unfortunate part is injuries. You know, this is a sport. Sports have injuries. You don't know when they're going to happen. You hope they don't happen, especially when it's a key piece like this. But I still do think the Nuggets will be fine when it comes to finishing the regular season. The problem is they're not going to have the space in the problem is they're not going to have anything close to being able to produce the tag team tandem that has been absolutely unguardable with their ability to space from each other while also being able to do multiple things on the court. And that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate um, that this happened and it's, it's breaking news because you know, Jamal Murray has been pretty steady when it comes to health and being out on the court and for him to be out for the whole season and, you know, him being as young as he is and this being a great opportunity to take advantage of the Lakers being down and we just don't know what they're going to be. It sucks if you're a Nuggets fan. It sucks if you're an NBA fan because this was interesting and we wanted to see if they can continue to ride high as they have been since the All-Star break and, you know, Everything was falling into place. They going up in the standings, being 4-4 already in the Western Conference. Jokic being dominant. Jamal Murray getting back into his form the last couple weeks. And for him to go down at this time, it's just the worst case scenario. Obviously, they're going to need guys like Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter to step their games up to another level if they're going to be able to stay as the fourth seed in the Western Conference just because – you're missing 20 points that you have no replacement for because he is getting paid and he is not going to be available at all. So guys are going to have to step up, but you still have no Jamal Murray at all. Um, and that's the reality of their team. So when I look at this team, they can do things that are, you know, a weaker version. They can still run pick and pop which Nikola Jokic has been amazing at this season, being able to hit the mid-range, being able to put the ball on the floor, hit a floater, make the passes, and also hit the three at a career-high level that he's been doing because they give him so much space, and he just was knocking it down. But the spacing is just going to be crowded for Jokic. He has, you know, the ability to pick defense apart with cuts. He has the defense at his shoulder when, I mean, he can bend the defense with, uh, depending on what side of the court he, he, he decides to attack. And for him to not have that shooter, that playmaker, that guy that can find guys and make the right play because he knows the system, he knows where guys should be at, he knows when guys should be cutting alongside Jokic, it is just devastating for them. And it's unfortunate for the Denver team that has been trying to get to the next level. They took a big step last year getting to the conference finals. And this year... They wanted to take a bigger step, and and that's why you make the Aaron Gordon trade, and that's why you go all in, you know, getting JaVale McGee because you feel like you have a shot. You feel like you have a chance to beat anybody uh, with this roster as it's currently built uh, after the trade deadline. So 
this is something that I wasn't expecting. I knew he had seriously hurt it, but I, I was just wanted to see what type of Denver we was going to get when the playoffs start. Just because that's when, you know, we want to see can they beat the Phoenix? Can they beat the Lakers? Can they beat the Clippers again? Um, and, and is this a real team? I still question that a little bit just because they didn't really play any great teams yet before he went down. And I really wanted to see them against the league's best as, as a healthy team versus another healthy contender. And we wasn't really able to get enough of that now especially because he went down so this is going to be something that can either help Jokic MVP case or it can stop them from winning MVP if he can't adjust or he can't adapt or things just get too clogged and difficult his numbers can get hurt his efficiency can get hurt his turnovers can go up and you know the record can become mediocrity um because they still should be able to beat the good and bad teams or just can they beat the best teams and, and the teams that can actually win the title i know that this doesn't destroy their future They're, we don't know when he's going to come back and we don't know how he's going to be it's going to take him some time but i know he'll be strong and i know he'll get through it but the question to me will be with a year probably taken off of their ceiling that that's that that hurts you know building that chemistry with everybody that they just added and trying to figure out a way what do we need next to get to a championship level and now we have a year more to wait to see what they have to do um, as he will not be a part of this season and he will be hurt into the next season, uh, which would be 21-22. So I know everybody is shocked. I know everybody wasn't expecting that to happen last night, but, you know, it, it is part of the game. But I really want to see how this team, you know, resilient, will they be resilient? Will guys, you know, take care of this, you know, will they step up in these big moments? Will they have career nights? Will they have career month, month which is almost left for the season, and just take it in stride? Like, we lost Jamal Murray, but you know what? Let's go. And a lot of people was feeling like that anyway. People feel like Michael Porter Jr. giving you 50-50 from the field while also giving you a great amount of rebounds while also averaging 20 points per game since the All-Star break. Maybe it's his time to really show that he can do more. And they need him to do more at this point. And Monte Morris is a little banged up, so I don't know if you can really expect him to be better than what he is. And even if he is um, a little bit better, what is that? Does that make you still the fourth seed? Does that make you good enough to be top six? Or does that make you still where you are at right now? Other guys around them step their game up. We know that Aaron Gordon is capable of more, but the whole point of going to Denver is for him to play off these guys, not you know be a creator and not be a ball-dominant player because that didn't really work for him in Orlando. It worked for him in Denver because he didn't have to do those things anymore. And... We know that Michael Porter is fearless. He's going to take shots, and he's not afraid to take the tough ones. He's not afraid of the big moments. He has shown that as a rookie throughout his entire career, even before he was in the NBA. But, you know, him hitting his height kind of mess up him and Jamal Murray because he's not going to be able to do that when Jamal Murray comes back. And even if he does, it's still not the same because you paid Jamal Murray so much money that – even if he's a shell of himself after this injury, you're kind of stuck with him a little bit. And if we can't see the Jamal Murray that we've been seeing the last couple of weeks, if we have a worse version for the rest of his career in Denver, then it, it puts a limit and a ceiling to this team of being a championship team, um, which they was already putting strides to make to be done. And now this is a big setback for them. So, it's bad news. It's just not good, and I really don't know how I feel about it because I wasn't expecting this to happen to them. But now that it has happened, you know, their plans have really um, changed at this point because it all does depend on what Murray you get next year and what will he be from next year on um, in a Denver uniform. We even seen Gary Harris. He got hot. But he couldn't sustain it. He couldn't stay healthy. And he could never shoot or play the same way that he did before the contract. And they had to get rid of him. He went from being a foundational piece to a guy that they had to get off of. And will that happen to Jamal Murray? He already 
it wasn't the most athletic guy. He wasn't the most explosive guy. He wasn't the greatest defender, but this injury makes those things worse than they were before because it takes away your mobility. It takes away from your agility. It takes away from your lateral quickness. And Jamal Murray already didn't have much of that already. And now he has to, you know, figure out what works and what don't work all over again as he learns his body and gets adjusted to this injury um, once he gets back on the court. So if I'm a Denver fan, what do you think? Is it over? Do you think y'all will be fine two years from now? Do you all think it'll take y'all a year extra um, after this year plus another year to get back to being a serious team in the West? Do you think that Jamal Murray needs to be replaced? Do you think Michael Porter Jr. can be that superstar guy if Jamal Murray goes down? Maybe Michael Porter Jr. becomes the number two and, you know, flourishes in that role and really helps Jokic out? Or do you think that this is why you pick up Aaron Gordon? a guy that is capable of being a creator and, and a scorer to a certain extent and also can still play off Jokic and give him help in other areas besides just cutting and, and, and getting out in transition. So guys are going to have to play out of their mind. Guys are going to have to step up. Guys are going to have to do more than what they've been asked for. Guys are going to have to have to play significant more roles um than they are used to and that's just how it's just going to be for them other than that let me know what you guys think this is a tough one this is not something that i was prepared to do until i had to do it because i didn't want to see it and i really wanted to see denver hit a pinnacle with these acquisitions and them riding high after the all-star break and this just destroys all of that um so quickly um Two weeks ago, we was, the Denver was the hottest topic in the NBA. And now, with this devastating news, they just probably might be another team in the West. They went from being a team on the rise to now we just don't know what to expect from them because everything is uncertain and everything is unknown now. And with that being said, Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, signing out. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the rest of your night. Hopefully, you guys... <sighs> This is just tough to see. This is just tough to do right now. But other than that, Quinn Wade, basketball analysis.